Hey guys, this is Sakura Stallion and I'm doing something that I haven't done in a really long time and that is calling people out on their bullshit. So one of the big things that I've done is I don't really watch a lot of um, equestrian YouTubers and the reason why is because being educated on equestrian topics makes you really like it's a whole different view than just being interested in horses and since I do have two college degrees about horses I'm a lot more picky on the people that I watch and I tend to really just watch a lot more scientific based like things in my free time but Raleigh Link has been one person that I always like to say the nice southern um saying of <laughs> The blind chicken sometimes gets the corn. Because sometimes she says stuff that is correct, but sometimes the blind chicken gets corn, but it's still a blind chicken. And she is still very much a wrongly like informed person and is problematic in so many multiple ways. Um, somebody on TikTok, uh, not that non-binary equestrian on TikTok, was like comparing her to Sylvie Mistream and like that's like they're two peas in the pod if you want to talk about controversies and shit because you have Raleigh Link who's as controversial as um like PETA and then you have Sylvie whom is at least trying to be a good person nowadays which I like to at least say is something good I don't know about Raleigh Link but today we're going to watch her most recent video, which is about Arabian horses. I've not watched it. I don't know anything about it other than the fact that I am in Arabian horse spaces and a lot of things you hear about Arabian horses is just not true. So I'm really interested to see what she says because she doesn't really have any criteria backing her other than years of experience and I mean I don't have years of experience but at least I have two college degrees that may be all I have but you know it's a start so let's get started in seeing what is actually going on and what she wants to say about Arabians I'm very kind of interested This is so insane to me that this is just being completely normalized and accepted in the equestrian community. If you ever see a horse that looks like this or breeders doing stuff like this, it immediately needs to be called out and these people should be banned. They absolutely should before they start creating horses that have serious facial abnormalities that really inhibit their ability to breathe and function properly like a normal horse. Hey bitch and welcome back to another video. I'm ugh. I was going to say I was excited for this video but I ethical because it causes dogs or cats. Hey bitch and welcome back to another video. I'm ugh. I was gonna say I was excited for this video, but I just can't. I can't get there. You know, I don't like lying to you guys. I don't like putting on a face. When I come into videos, I want you guys to know what my mood is just right out of the gate. I love you guys. I love making these videos and spreading awareness, but you know, it's appropriate to not be happy. Anger is an emotion that we all experience and it's okay. a topic that just bothers me to my very core and this is something that really needs to be talked about because it's so heavily overlooked in the equestrian community I feel like this is becoming normalized and I don't want it to become normalized as a future veterinarian as you guys know I am in vet school this really worries me 
we're talking about not just brachycephalic dogs, we are also talking about overbreeding and selective breeding of horses. Okay, so that is the word that, to me, if you say overbreeding in the sense of Arabians, I immediately do not, like, kind of trust what you're saying. And you may be asking me why, like, in that case, of why are we worried about um, the word overbreeding, and it's very simple, and it's that it doesn't exist in the sense that you think of. When people think of overbreeding, and when they say overbreeding with Arabians, they're thinking of horses being bred and bred and bred and bred until they have these, like, birth defects. Which, if that is possible for anything, I would currently say that the most overbred horse is a quarter horse, and that is because there are a bunch of horses running around with genetic diseases, and it's not even just quarter horses, but it's not an Arabian by any means. There is a very small amount of Arabians, specifically in America, which is where a lot of these overbred Arabians come from, and there's not that much, like, point in actually making a discussion and bringing up that topic. Firstly, overbred in this sense, it's not true. Arabian horses are very much monitored and really well bred in a lot of cases, and depending on how they look and which line they come from, it's pretty interesting. Arabian horses have multiple different strands and multiple different types that come around. They're a very versatile breed, so you'll have some breeds that don't have as big of a dish, and you'll have some breeds that have very big dishes. So her saying that, firstly, her comparing brachiophilic dogs and Arabians is just not the same thing. <laughs> it's not by any means, because brachiophilia has not, like, really been seen in horses, and I think it's, I can never pronounce that word, but another thing that concerns me is that I don't know how many years Raleigh Link has said that she's in vet school, but nobody knows what vet school she's going to, and nobody knows how long she's been there, nor how far she is from being a vet, so she's currently not licensed to do anything. Anybody can go to vet school, anybody can learn the same things that a vet at a vet school does. It takes an actual license to call yourself a vet and give, like, advice that is from a vet's mouth. And it only takes two years of community college to become a vet tech. I have the exact same amount of college experience as veterinary technicians. So put that into perspective on if you want to listen to someone's opinion. We're talking about not just brachycephalic dogs, we are also talking about overbreeding and selective breeding of horses, more specifically Arabians, because there is a new horse that's been around for a few years now that is considered the most desirable Arabian looking Arabian. We'll get into that in a little bit, okay? <laughs> Overbreeding or selective breeding, as a lot of people like to call it, is a serious issue, not just among horses, but also among dogs, cats, and other animals that are being selectively bred for certain qualities. A lot of selective breeding is very unethical because it causes dogs or cats or any other species of animal to have a lot of health complications. Technically, all Scottish folds suffer from FOCD. FOCD is a progressive, painful condition that has a wide range of symptoms. Severely affected cats have shortened, thickened limbs and tails, deformed toes, and overall reduced mobility. Selective breeding 
usually takes place when people are trying to enhance or change the look of a certain animal drastically. A perfect example of selective breeding is brachycephalic dogs. If you don't know what brachycephalic dogs are, let me give you an example. Brachycephalic airway obstructive syndrome is a pathological condition affecting short-nosed dogs and cats, which can lead to severe respiratory distress. There are four different anatomical abnormalities that contribute to this disease, all of which occur more commonly in brachycephalic breeds. All of these components make it more difficult to breathe in situations such as exercise, stress, or heat, and animals with these abnormalities are also unable to take deep, fast breaths to blow off carbon dioxide. This leads to distress. So, I want to say that what she's talking about currently is very true, and as a person that works in a vet clinic, I see this literally all the time, and it is a big topic of discussion, and it has ruined dog breeds for me because of the amount of different diseases that can come into each specific dog. I could never own a pug or a Frenchie or an American Bulldog because of brachycephalic um, issues like this. This information is correct. I will put that there, that the information given in this point in the Scottish Fold is correct. Notice though that those are dogs and cats. So with that point that this information that she is giving now is correct, this is for dogs and cats and further increases respiratory rates and heart rates, creating a vicious cycle that can quickly lead to life-threatening situations. Brachycephalic airway obstructive syndrome is a side effect or symptom of selective breeding. We have specifically bred dogs to look this way, and it's not only cruel and inhumane, but it's also unethical. All of these dogs have serious health complications and are subjected to years and years, if not their entire life, of medical work and surgeries, etc. These dogs do not live a good quality of life. And the reason I bring up brachycephalic dogs is because this is the perfect example. There are many other examples of selective breeding gone wrong, but I think this one is the perfect example of selective breeding gone wrong. If you don't know who L. Ray Magnum is, which that is just the dumbest name I've ever heard in my life, this is possibly the ugliest horse that I have ever seen being bred, which I think is so funny that they're talking about how this horse is worth millions of dollars. This is literally the ugliest horse I've ever seen, and this horse looks like it has se So, uh, L. Ray Magnum is very much a real horse. I know people who have worked at the same barns that he has been at. Um, if you notice, a lot of these videos are sales pictures and, like, sale videos of this horse. And let me tell you firstly that there are multiple things that Arabian owners do when they are trying to sell a horse, like oiling, um, parts of their face to make them look shiny, clipping parts of their face to make it look um, skinnier and accentuate curves. So there is a lot of actual manipulation done for the horse physically with its hair to make it look different. With that being said, if you don't like an Arabian horse's look, that's your personal opinion. Okay, put that, put that down. That is your opinion. Not everybody is going to agree that a horse has to look one way. For example, I don't like overly Roman noses. I am pretty much a clean cut, flat face horse person. Um, that's what my horse has. He has like the very slightest thickening of a nose bridge. I actually lean a little bit more towards the slimmer side that you would see that some Arabians have. So to me, I like a lot smaller refined heads, which is the term that you use when judging Arabian classes, by the way. They want a refined head. That is like the specific term that you always really want to use. 
serious facial and airway obstructions and abnormalities. It's honestly unbelievable how unethical this horse looks. And there's a lot of other Arabians specifically that are following down this pathway of becoming more and more cartoon. So you can kind of see it when it, she's zooming in firstly. Um, she's yet to show any other horse that's not El Rey Magnum, which should really show just how much little or just how much not proof she has. Because if you only have one horse to support your claim, that's not a lot. But this is a really good picture because you can actually see right here the shine of oil. Like, it is very clear that his face was oiled for this, which is going to make it look slicker. It's going to make it look slimmer. Secondly, you can see that same shine around the nostrils, and I'm pretty sure his eyes as well as his muzzle were clipped. There's some cases where when horse, when babies have like baby fluff hair, you can really tell, but kind of with the way that his hair is cut in this area, it makes me think that pretty much his entire muzzle um, is clipped, and you can't see whiskers on him, so that's pretty like high point as well as his face being oiled that's going to accentuate a lot of these curves and it's what a lot of places consider desirable secondly you can actually see that the skull is still very much the same for a normal horse the part that really makes a dip accentuate is not a dipping of the skull it is a jibba and the jibba is a fat pocket kind of that is right in between Arabian horses eyes that kind of protrudes a little bit it makes their forehead look a little bigger and then that goes down and makes a bigger swoop when going down this is very much a normal horse skull just with prominent fat on its head you can even see that with the fact that the nostrils which are skin covering bone don't really protrude out that much when he breathes. And there are probably better pictures of it, but I'm pointing it out as we see here. Dune like looking, and this is not okay. We are literally doing the same thing to horses as what we did to brachycephalic dog breeds. So I really don't understand what she's trying to go for with saying that this is the same thing as a brachycephalic dog breed, because if you were saying this was the same thing, look at how long this muzzle is if this was brachycephalic it would be like cut off like right here it would be cut off right here the nose would be like right here but the nose is all the way down here it's not brachycephalic in any way brachycephalic is basically the muzzle being pushed inward not downward this is not contruding or shortening of any point and this is a really good example of seeing the oil on his face and the fact that he's been clipped you can see that he has a pretty big jibba because that is a lot of room in between his eyes which is going to make a lot prominent uh, prominent dish so I wanted to read a few articles and kind of discuss what's going on with this because this is just wild. This is so insane to me that this is just being completely normalized and accepted in the equestrian community. If you ever see a horse that looks like this or breeders doing stuff like this, it immediately needs to be called out and these people should be banned. They absolutely should before they start creating horses that have serious facial abnormalities that really inhibit their ability to breathe and function properly like a normal horse. The Arabian horse is easy to recognize. The dished face and slender throat latch are characteristics of the horse breed. However, a young Arabian horse called El Rey Magnum has raised concerns among veterinarians. Concerns over breed standards exist in all sorts of demands. So I'm going to pop up two things. Firstly, there's no website for this. Um, I'm pretty sure this is the exact same article that I debunked on my TikTok. Go follow my TikTok, by the way. It's Sakura Stallion. So I post actually more often on there than I do here. But um, go follow that. That'd be really nice. Thank you. But I debunked this entire claim because of this very specific line. Such breeding may cause breathing problems in the young horse. Okay, that is the entire claim that these points make. This entire two sentence, it may cause breeding problems. Breathing problems. What 
what does this have to do with anything? May cause breathing problems? I mean, a lot of things may cause breathing problems. That's not specific. It's very vague. It is correct horses can't breathe through their mouths and a potential blockage in their airways could lead to serious problems. But this does not give you any information on how this could, like, is actually affecting the horse. Domestic animal breeds. This happens when the search for an ideal look or function overcomes functionality and sometimes even the welfare of an animal. We see this in dogs, cats, and sometimes horses. A young Arabian horse, El Ray Magnum, caused controversy in the veterinarian world back in 2017 due to an extreme dish to its face, a trait unique to the breed. The colt raised concerns as veterinarians believed his extremely dished face to be harmful. Such extreme breeding can cause breathing problems in young horses. Un Notice that she didn't even say may cause, she said can cause. Like, she's reading this exact same line, yet she changed the words. That is a bad sign to make me think that she is not actually reading, like, the article, but also, all of this controversy happened back in 2017 when this horse was a baby. This is a fully grown horse, like nowadays. He is a fully grown horse. He looks like any normal Arabian. Why? Because baby horses are ugly. They do not look the same as they will growing up. A horse ranging from the ages of newborn to like two years old are the most conformational wreck things that you will normally get. Like once a horse ages out of the two-year-old range, you can kind of actually see what a horse is going to look like. Unlike dogs, horses can't breathe through their mouths. A potential blockage in their airway could lead to serious problems. So I think this is really important to acknowledge because one of the reasons why brachycephalic dogs, in my opinion, have lasted as long as they have is because dogs can also breathe through their mouth. If brachycephalic dog breeds could only breathe through their nose, they would all be dead. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm not even saying that exaggerating. They would, they would absolutely all be dead. Frenchies would not be around. A lot of bulldogs would not be around. Even some boxers that have really short muzzles. It just wouldn't happen. Furthermore, like most animal breeds, the Arabian may suffer from congenital defects, as some even fatal. The risk, however, comes from accepting what the vets see as defect. Here's a really good example of the oil on the skin, by the way, if you look in the back of this picture, and also the fact that there is a really nice clipping job done, um, since you can kind of tell that there has been at least some clip in this area to make the eye look, eye look bigger. You can kind of see the jibba as we're looking here. Um, this is also not like an immediate continuation of the article, by the way. This is just like another snippet of it. You want to actually just read the article like through and not just taking things out. That kind of say what you're trying to breed as necessary and welcome breed characteristics. The Arabian horse's typical dished face is one of the most iconic characteristics of the breed. The shape helps the horse breathe in its original desert environment where the air is dry. Combined with large, wide nostrils, it enhances the airflow into the lungs, which gives the horse famous endurance. The Arabian horse's ability to breathe is a characteristic of that horse breed and their ability to be amazing endurance horses. So so that's why it's just so unbelievable that anybody would want to selectively breed a horse designed for its breathing and ability to run long distances to have a very obstructed airway to minimize that capability and characteristic of the so raleigh where in this video have you said that el rey magnum has an obstructed airway i'll wait Where in this entire video have we had an actual, like, medical claim that this horse has obstructed airways? Where? Where has it, like, been? 
this entire time you've been reading one article. One article saying that there could be possible health, like, defects. That's it. L. Ray Magnum does not have obstructed airways. As a five-year-old, he's been vet-checked multiple times. He's a perfectly sound, perfectly happy, healthy horse. And the dished face, big eyes, and big nostrils, all things that L. Ray Magnum has, are the characteristics that help the endurance. So, where's your claim? Breed, it's just insane. British veterinarian Tim Greet believes L. Ray's nose might impede his breathing. In his view, L. Ray would not be able to cope with exercise. The major. So, let's just give Tim Greet the benefit of the doubt. But firstly, Tim Greet has not seen this horse in person. He has seen the same videos that we are looking at in the back of this video. That's all Tim Greet has seen. He is diagnosing this horse based off random videos that he has seen. That's the vet that we're listening to. If that is not a red flag enough, this the fact that it's he believes El Rey's nose might impede his breathing. Is it? That's that's our diagnosis. Might impede his breathing. Well, we know El Rey is perfectly fine with exercise, especially as he is now an adult horse that is being trained to ride and is rideable, that he is perfectly fine with being exercised at any point. So that's not true. But this one vet is concerned that his nose might impede his breathing and he's never seen the horse in his life. Yes, this is a primary source we should be listening to concern comes with breeding for appearances rather than function. Yes, absolutely. I mean, this is definitely for appearances and not functionality. Where will it end? Is it really so bad for a horse to look like a horse, not a cartoon character? I mean, that's absolutely true. This horse 100% resembles- Notice, um, I paused because notice that despite this horse being born in like 2017, Raleigh has not used adult footage of this horse. It is only footage of him as a, like, foal when he is going to be looking drastically different than how he does as an adult horse. Just take that and look at how she's looking at Bull's a cartoon character. It is not bred this way for functionality or even for the horse's own comfort. This is bred like this for humans because humans like the way that this looks and it's honestly absurd. American veterinarians who examined the colt claim he has no breathing problems and no health issues. Also, Doug Leadley, the owner of El Rey Magnum, claims he has no issues. Well, guess what? He's not gonna tell people I, I like how she's mad, like, obviously she's mad that the owner says he has no issues, but if the line before that just said multiple vets say he has no issues, then, like, why would the owner not believe that? If I had my horse checked out, like, multiple times, and each vet was like, no, this horse is perfectly fine, I would then turn around and say, oh, this horse is perfectly fine, <laughs> like... Are you going to be mad that the owner is just saying what multiple American vets who have actually seen the horse are saying? That's a weird hill to die on. People, if the colt has issues, even if the colt had issues, right? Like, they're not going to tell people that because they want to breed this horse. That's the only reason why they bred the horse to look that way is to make a lot of money off of him. And I want us to examine a little bit a horse's nasal cavity and basically the anatomy of a horse's face. So as you can see, horses can only breathe through their nasal cavity, which goes down their trachea. It's extremely important to not obstruct a horse's nasal cavity. That's also why it's important why people take measures on placing halters properly on horse faces, on placing bridles properly on the horse's face, on placing flash nose bands properly, etc., etc., etc. We take um I I would also like to add 
that actually you also want to be concerned about it because the na not just because of the nasal cavity, but because of this bone right here um, that is very thin, which is why you are also properly fitting your tack. Because there is a bone here that if you have something on too tight, can snap. But also notice right here, look at that, look. There's there's a little bump. Hey, it's 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 a bump. That would be where the jibba is, by the way. Like right here, you can kind of just see where that dish would be. And it looks pretty natural even if you just trace it with like your mouse. You can go right down to where the nasal cavity bone would be and it pretty much fits. So I don't really know what the point of bringing this diagram up, which also does not show a horse's skull, by the way, which if um, the horse was brachiophilic, the skull would be deformed. So I don't know why we're bringing that up when it's apparently not relevant, but... Take so many steps and precautions to make sure that anything that's on a horse's face is placed properly, and that's because Horses only have one way of breathing. They cannot breathe out their mouth like you and I can, only their nose. When you obstruct a horse's nasal cavity and you make it- Can we, can we just appreciate how not true this is right here? Like, that's, that's not even how L. Ray Magnum's face would look. L. Ray Magnum's face dishes right up here in line with the nose. Because if you notice when you looked at pictures of L. Ray, his nostrils aren't obstructed. Because the horse has a perfectly formed skull. This would not be a perfectly formed skull. Which would obstruct the nostrils, it would obstruct the eyes, it would really, it would fuck up the entire horse if the skull was not made perfectly. So this right here is literally just not true and looks like it was made in Microsoft Paint because it probably was. But if that was true, the bone would literally be like this. And since you can look at El Rey and see where his bone structure comes down from his head straight down, then that's it's literally not true. <laughs> I don't even know how to, like, explain it other than the fact that this is a child's markup of a fake problem. It's half the size or a third of the size just very meshed down, like what you see with L. Ray Magnum. You are limiting and inhibiting that horse's ability to breathe. It is not just inhumane, it is cruel, and I don't know how many times I have to say that to get it through people's minds. L. Ray Magnum's is literally half, or if not a third. She's about to say, I think that it's half or a third of a regular horse's size, but you you can see where the bone structure goes. You you can see, like tracing it very carefully, where the bone structure goes. He just has a jibba. He has a forehead. The, it, that is literally the difference that we are looking at, is that he has a forehead and that it is defined by multiple other factors. Like, this horse has makeup on. Of course it's going to look different. Smaller than a standard horse's nasal cavity. And it's not just L. Ray Magnum. I've seen a lot of Arabians that have nasal cavities that look like this now because it's becoming trendy. And this is so horrible. This is so horrible. And a lot of people are going to say, well... This is a really good example, too, because um, the nasal cavity would be right under here when it slopes up, as well as you can kind of see the pr like prominence of a forehead right here. So, the bone stops. If you look at a normal horse's, the bone kind of would stop at about here. So, all of this is not boned. But this bone right here is perfectly straight you can kind of see where it comes down and just ends. So it's more or less the fact that he has a very big jibba and that he's been clipped very obviously now that I'm looking at this and oiled that just makes him look slicker than what he actually is. 
oh, he's not an endurance horse, he's just halter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If you take away a horse's ability to breathe, just like you take- And see right here, you can also see it. This right here would be where the bone starts and goes down. And then he's snorting, so his nostrils are flared out, which makes it look bigger. But you can see where the normal head of the horse goes. And the bone stops, and then it's just skin down here. So, no, his, his, his face is, like, perfectly normal. Actually, like, the skull would be perfectly normal. This looks a little weird, and I'm sure this picture's probably photoshopped because um, a lot of Arabian pictures are photoshopped to make their dishes look bigger. So it's really hard to even know if this is an actual, like, unedited photo of him. But I digress. Take away a brachycephalic dog's ability to breathe or cat's ability to breathe. It is cruel and it's inhumane. I definitely question the ethics of this horse and this horse's ability to breathe. I definitely look at this horse and see that the nasal cavity is obstructed, just like you would see with any other animal in any other breed that had a severely shortened snout or airway, nasal cavity, etc. So this is a problem. And anytime you see this, it deserves to be called out because these people need to stop. Somebody needs to stand up and say, hey, this is wrong and it needs to stop. Because unlike all other animals that we've done this to horses will actually start dropping dead so like this flies is a really good example i would like to say of animal like activism that is in the wrong spot because i hope that like after me sitting here and critiquing as we go along you can kind of see the flaws and holes in raleigh's claim but there's not a lot supporting her claim that this horse is actually, like, improperly bred. I'm going to pull them up for you. I'm going to pull up this horse for you, and let's actually look and see what he currently looks like. Orion Farms. Here he is. Pulling him up. Ah, oh, look at that. Look at that picture. You can clearly see where his, like, nose points out in the def like def mm, the definition of his nostrils is there if anything this horse just has really prominent nostrils as well as the fact that his face has been clipped you can kind of see it his face has been oiled it's probably some photoshop at points in time like you can even see here this is where they've clipped in a different picture so you can even see how they would have done um like a way to trick your eyes essentially but even then this this looks like like a normal pony head like oh you can't see it on the picture that you're looking at but like if you saw this as like a young baby coming at you most people would not recognize that this was a weird horse there'd be a lot of better pictures for him look here's another picture of him you can still clearly see the formed skull with prominent just facial muscles pretty much ah there we go i'm trying to figure out how to click out and look look at him in movement there you go obviously he's able to move capably he's able to breathe as he does this and the illusion does not hold up a lot of times when you're looking at the horse from a front view this like a lot of things that the dish happens with are really for a profile view front view of an Arabian horse, you kind of just go, oh, that's a normal horse. Let's see if there's more pictures of him. Ah, perfect. Here's one right here. This right here, you can literally see. You can literally see where it would go. He just has, like, really prominent facial muscles, pretty much. But this is a perfectly, like, well-bred Arabian. This would win, like, some nice halter classes. And oh, look at that. Look at that, everybody. He's rideable. So obviously he can breathe under exercise if he's broke to ride. That would be a lot of given, but look at that very big point. You can even see that the illusion also kind of falters here and he looks a lot more like any standard old Arabian. And this is another one good good version too because with the hair blocking the front it does lessen the, the extent of an illusion and i would always really say that you want to get as many like 
candid photos of an Arabian to go and, like, look and actually see if they look different from, um, how they are, like, in person. Do, 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 do. I wonder if there's some, ah, here's some. And obviously sale videos, like I said, they're going to have some points where they're kind of edited. Dang, I'm going to have to go back. But this right here, look at how straight from the pole that goes down to right where the bone would end. Because the bone does not go all the way down to the nostrils. It does not. That's why you have to properly fit on um, your tack. And these are very clearly big nostrils. So no, his his face is perfectly shaped. Like, even just looking at him right here. No, he is not, like, a thing that I personally like. Like I said, I am much more of a neutral horse, like, look. But you can see where his skull is and that it is still shaped normally. It's not brachiospelic at all. Like, at any point, it's not inhib like inhibiting any breathing on his part. So, let's just kind of put that into perspective when we are listening. <laughs> Going back to Raleigh, we have 24 seconds, and I'm not going to give her the time of day to go and finish this, but I really hope that this kind of gives information that other people can look at and kind of take her claims with a grain of salt. Um... This video was just not true in any shape or form and has no real claims backing it, especially considering that she doesn't have any sources in the video. Um, we can totally look and see what um, is here. There's no sources in the description. So, uh... I guess she doesn't have any sources. <laughs> I guess she's just making these claims without any sources. And you know what? It took us 40 minutes to get here. But that entire video was just not real, apparently. No sources. Nothing to put it there. So, well, that was me, Sakura Stallion, with my two equestrian uh, college degrees debunking Raleigh Link. Pink horse versus white woman, essentially. White on white crime, I'd like to say. But I hope everyone enjoyed this video. I needed to get all this off my chest and vent somewhere, pretty much. So I hope everyone has a good day and really enjoys themselves with the time that we have. So bye!